Hello everyone, this is Glenda and welcome back to Creative Grandma. Today we are doing part two of the Snowman toilet paper cover. So I'm going to show you everything you are going to need to make this snowman and then we can get started with part two. I'm just going to read down over the material list if this is your first time seeing the snowman video. There is another video with part one. So let me go over the materials you're going to need. You're going to need one skein of white and I use Red Heart Super Saver. It's a four medium weight yarn and it's a seven ounce skein. You're going to need about a half an ounce of orange for the nose. Now I use 254, the number pumpkin with Red Heart Super Saver. And you're going to need a few yards of black to embroider the, the mouth onto the face. You're going to need Red Heart with Love Metallic. It's a number four medium weight yarn. And one skein of number 8918 red. You're going to need one pair of black safety eyes, nine millimeter. You're going to need three black buttons and these are size 5 8 inch or 16 millimeter. You're going to need matching sewing thread to sew on your buttons. And you're going to need some fiber fill stuffing to stuff the head and the upper body. You're going to need a yarn needle and you're going to need a mega roll of toilet paper. Now I use the really large mega rolls and that's what size this toilet paper cover fits. You're also going to need a crochet hook size H8 five millimeter or whatever size gives you the correct gauge. Now the correct gauge for this project is 11 single crochet and 16 rows equal four inches. So it's very important that you use the correct gauge and the correct hook in order for it to fit the toilet paper. So let's jump in and get part two started. So here is our snowman toilet paper cover. Now he's a little too tall for me to show you the whole thing, so I'm just gonna lay him down a little bit. So I did the previous video, so if you're just now finding this video and you wanna make the snowman, you would have to go back to my YouTube channel and look for snowman toilet paper cover part one, and that's where we made the head, we made the neck, the shoulders, and then we made the part that comes down over the toilet paper. I know it doesn't look like much here, but this will turn into this adorable little snowman. So for part two, we're going to get started and we're going to start with the hat. We're going to make the hat, the hat band. We're going to put the tassel on and then we're going to stuff the head, stuff the hat, put the hat on the head, and see how far we get in part two. Hopefully we might be able to get the whole thing finished in part two, but I think we may have to have a part three. Now these instructions are five pages long, so it's an easy pattern to do. There's just a lot of things to do to make all the accents and all the pieces to put the snowman together. So just be patient, take your time, and he'll be done in no time at all. So let's get started. We're going to start with the hat. You're going to need your crochet hook size H8 or 5 millimeter and we're going to start with that red heart with love metallic in the color red. So grab your yarn, grab your hook, I'll be right back and we'll get the hat started. I'm back. I have my red attached to my hook. Now I just use a double knot and a lot of people email me and say, Glenda, why do you do that? Well, that's just the way my gram taught me and that's just the way I've always done it. Now you can use a slip knot or whichever way you prefer to add your yarn. This is just my preferred method. We're going to start with the chain four. You're going to yarn over the hook, pull through that loop, that's one. Yarn over, pull through, that's two yarn over, pull through, that's three, yarn over and pull through and that's four. So now we're going to start round one. Round one, we're going to work 10 double crochet into that fourth chain from hook. That first three chains is gonna count as the first double crochet. So let's begin. Yarn over the hook. You're going to skip three chain, one, two, three, Insert your hook into that fourth chain from hook. Yarn over, pull through. You have three loops. Yarn over, pull through two. 
yarn over and pull through two. That is how you make a double crochet. We need to make nine more, yarn over, insert into that same chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. So now I'm just going to count my stitches as I make them. We need to make eight more double crochet, yarn over, insert into that same chain, work a double crochet. That's three of ten, yarn over, insert into that same chain, work a double crochet, that's four of ten. That's five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. So when you look at your work, you should have your beginning chain three, and then you should have ten double crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. With the chain three, it counts as eleven double crochet around. We're going to join by slip stitching into the top of that beginning chain three. Count up one, two, three, insert your hook into the top of that chain, yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on your hook. Round one is finished. So now we're going to start round two. We're going to start with the chain one. Now the chain one does not count as a stitch. In round two, we're going to work two half double crochet in each stitch around to that last stitch and then we're going to work just one half double crochet into that last stitch. So let's begin. We're going to yarn over the hook. You're going to insert right into the top of that joining stitch where you joined your round. Yarn over, pull through that stitch. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. You just made a half double crochet. We need to work one more half double crochet into that same stitch yarn over the hook, insert into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through all three loops. That is how you make a half double crochet. So now we're going to continue and we're going to work two half double crochet in each stitch around and we're going to stop before the last stitch. So let's continue, yarn over the hook, insert into the next stitch, and work two half double crochet. There's one, yarn over, insert into that same stitch and work your second half double crochet. And that's all there is to this round. I'll show you one more time. Yarn over the hook, insert into the next stitch and you're going under both loops of those stitches. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three. Yarn over, insert into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through three. So now you're going to continue and work two half double crochet in each stitch around until you get to the last stitch. Leave the last stitch unworked and I'll meet you there and show you how to finish the round. I'm over at the end of round two. You should have one stitch remaining. Your last stitch is right here where that double crochet stitch is. So for the last stitch, we're going to work just one half double crochet into that stitch. Yarn over the hook, insert into that last double crochet, and work one half double crochet. Now we're going to join our round. We're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of that beginning half double crochet. So you have your joining bar, you have your chain one, and we're going into the top of that half double crochet stitch, and we're going to slip stitch. Yarn over the hook, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. Round two is finished. You should have a total of 21 stitches around when you get to the end of round two. 
So now we're going to start round three. We're going to start with the chain one, and again, that chain one does not count as a stitch. We're going to start and work two half double crochet into this first beginning stitch. Yarn over the hook, insert into that first stitch, and work a half double crochet. That's one. Yarn over the hook, insert into that same stitch, and work a half double crochet. And that's two. Now we're going to work one half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. Yarn over the hook, insert into the next stitch, and work one half double crochet. Yarn over the hook, insert into the next stitch, and work a half double crochet. Now we're ready to start the repeat. So the repeat will be, we're going to work two half double crochet into this next stitch, and one half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. So if you need help, you'll click back on the video to where I say this is the start of the repeat, work until I say this is the end of the repeat, and you're going to repeat that around to the end of round three. So let's begin. Yarn over the hook, insert into that next stitch, and work two half double crochet. There's one. Yarn over, insert into that same stitch, work your second half double crochet. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, and work a half double crochet. Yarn over, insert into that next stitch, and work a half double crochet. And that is the end of the repeat. I'll show you one more time. Again, this is where you'll click back on the video, and you'll work until I say this is the end of the repeat, and you're just going to repeat that around. So let's begin again. Yarn over, insert into that next stitch, and work two half double crochet. One, yarn over, insert into that same stitch, and work your second half double crochet. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, and work a half double crochet. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, and work a half double crochet. And that is the end of the repeat. So go ahead and repeat two half double crochet into the next stitch, one half double crochet into the next stitch, one half double crochet into the next stitch, repeat that around, and I'll meet you at the end of round three. I'm over at the end of round three. You should have a total of 28 half double crochet around your work. And then again, you ended with a half double crochet into that last stitch. You have your joining bar, you have your chain one, and then you have that first half double crochet. We're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of that beginning half double crochet. Insert under the top two loops of that first half double crochet stitch and slip stitch. Yarn over, pull through the stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. Round three is finished. Now we're going to begin round four. Round four, we're going to start with the chain one. Again, the chain one does not count as a stitch. We're going to work two half double crochet into this first beginning stitch. Yarn over the hook, insert into that first beginning stitch, and work two half double crochet. One, yarn over, insert into that same stitch, work a half double crochet. That's two. Now we're going to work one half double crochet into the next stitch, yarn over the hook, insert into the next stitch, and work a half double crochet. So now we're going to start our repeat, very simple repeat. We're going to work two half double crochet into the next stitch, one half double crochet into the next, and we're going to repeat that around. So if you need help, this is where you'll start the repeat. This is the start of the repeat for round four. So let's begin. Yarn over the hook, insert into the next stitch, and work two half double crochet. One yarn over, insert back into that same stitch, and work a second half double crochet. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, and work one half double crochet. 
and that is the end of the repeat. I'll show you one more time. This is the start of the repeat. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, and work two half double crochet. One, yarn over, insert into that same stitch, work your second half double crochet. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, and work one half double crochet. And that is the end of the repeat. So continue around. You're going to work two half double crochet into the next stitch, one half double crochet into the next stitch. Repeat that around and I'll meet you at the end of round four. I'm over at the end of round four and you should have a total of 42 half double crochet around to the end of round four. We're going to go ahead and join with a slip stitch at the top of that beginning half double crochet. Remember you have that joining bar, your chain one, you're going to insert under the top two loops of that first half double crochet and slip stitch. Yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. Round four is complete. Now we're going to start round five. We're going to start with the chain one, and again the chain one does not count as a stitch. We're going to work one half double crochet in each stitch around. Yarn over the hook, insert into that first stitch, and work a half double crochet. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, work a half double crochet. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, and remember go under the top two loops of each stitch, work a half double crochet. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, and work a half double crochet. Continue and work one half double crochet in each stitch around. I'll meet you at the end of round five. I'm over at the end of round five and you should still have a total of 42 half double crochet around your work. We're going to join with a slip stitch. Again, you have that joining bar, you have your chain one, and then you have that beginning half double crochet. Insert under the top two loops of that first half double crochet and slip stitch. Yarn over the hook, pull it through that stitch, and pull it through the loop on your hook. Round five is finished. So now for round six through 12, you're just going to click back on the video and you're going to work one half double crochet in each stitch around. So you would begin the round with a chain one, half double crochet in each stitch around, join with the slip stitch, and you just repeat round five for seven more times. When you get to the end of round 12, I'll meet you there. I'm over at the end of round 12 and this is what it looks like. It's starting to look like a hat now, a dome shape. So now we're going to join together. Now, before you join, I want to show you on my snowman here, let me zoom out a little. When I first started crocheting this, it felt like the yarn was thinner. It just, it just didn't have the same feel of when I first made this hat. So I thought it looked a little small. So I'm holding it up to the snowman. So now I counted the rounds. It's the same amount of rounds, but it looks a little shorter. So this is what happens sometimes when you crochet. <laughs> no two is exactly the same. So I don't know if I crocheted too tight or if when I stuff it, now I put my hand in there like I stuffed it, and then it kind of come back to about the right shape. Now, if you want to add an extra round or two, that's up to you if you want your hat higher. I just thought it looked a little smaller than the original, so I'm not sure what's going on there. It just felt like the yarn was thinner. So I don't use this yarn very much, but I like the sparkle. So it's up to you if you want to add one or two rounds to your hat. Just compare it. Um, you don't have anything to compare it to because we're just getting started. So if I didn't have my snowman here, I probably wouldn't have noticed that. And it probably will self-correct when I get that stuffing in there. I'm going to go ahead and join. I'm going to skip that joining bar, skip that chain one, 
insert under the top two loops of that first half double crochet stitch, yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on your hook. I'm going to fasten off, and I always chain two. This is the way I was taught. One, two, I pull up on my hook, pull that yarn out, grab the yarn, and then pull down, and it creates a nice secure knot. So now we're just going to set the hat aside. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start and make this band, which will be attached later. So we're just making a strip with red and white single crochets to put a band around the hat. So set the hat aside and let's begin the band. I attached my yarn to my hook and now we're using the red jet. So we're going to begin the hat band by chaining five. Yarn over, pull through, that's one, two, three, four, and five. We're going to start row one and we're going to skip that first chain. Insert your hook into the second chain from your hook and work a single crochet. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. That's how you do a single crochet. I'll show you one more time. Insert into the next chain and work a single crochet. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through two loops. That is how you work a single crochet. Insert into the next chain and work a single crochet. Insert into the next chain and work a single crochet. When you look at your work, you'll have four single crochet across. One, two, three, and four. Now we're going to begin row two. You're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. You're going to skip that beginning chain one, insert into that first single crochet, and work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch and work a single crochet. So now we're over to the last stitch. You're going to have to grab your white and we're going to attach our white. You're going to insert your hook into that last single crochet. You're going to yarn over with the red and you're going to pull it through the stitch. Now I'm going to tie my white around the red and I'm going to secure it with a double knot. And this is because I'm going to carry my yarn up along the side of the hat band. And that way that first joining of that white will be nice and secure. So now what you're going to do is you're going to yarn over with the white and you're going to pull it through the two red loops and you can see that it finished that last stitch off with red and you're ready to start the next row with the white. So let's begin row three. You're going to chain one. You're going to turn your work. You're going to skip that chain one. You're going to insert into that first stitch. Work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch and you're going under both loops of those stitches both top loops. Work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch. Work a single crochet. And if you're worried about this knot, this will be on the back of the band. So when you sew this onto the hat, you're not going to see that knot. Insert into that last stitch and work a single crochet. Row three is finished and now we're going to start row four. You're going to chain one, you're going to turn your work. You're going to skip the chain one space, insert into the first single crochet and work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. And again, we're working two rows of each color. So when you get to the second row of the color you're working on, you're going to change colors in that last stitch. You're going to insert into the last stitch. 
you're going to use the current color, yarn over, and pull through. Then when you have the two current color loops on your hook, you're going to grab the next color, which is the red. It's right behind your work. You just grab it and pull it right up, and it's going to carry along the side of your work. Yarn over with the red and pull through the two white loops. It finishes row four with the white matching those stitches, and then your red is ready for the next row. So let's continue, and we'll work two more rows in the red. You're going to chain one. This is the start of row five. You're going to turn your work, skip that beginning chain one, insert into that first stitch, and you're going to work one single crochet in each stitch across. You'll have a total of four single crochet. Insert into that last stitch, work a single crochet. You're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. You're going to skip the chain one. You're going to insert into that first stitch, work a single crochet. You're going to single crochet in each stitch across to that last stitch. We're over to the last stitch. So now we're going to work half the stitch with the current color and finish the stitch with the next color. Insert into that last stitch, yarn over with the red, and pull it through the stitch. Drop your red, grab the next color, which is white, carry it up along the side of your work, yarn over, and pull it through the two red loops on your hook. And that is how it's done. And again, when we sew this onto the hat, this will be on the wrong side of the work and you won't see it. It's a nice way to not have to weave in all those ends. So now what you need to do is you can click back on the video if you need help. You, you click back to row three, which is the start of the white row, and you'll repeat rows three through six 11 times. You will work until you get to the end of row 50. I'll meet you there. I'm over at the end of row 50. This is what your work should look like. You should have started with red and your strip should end with red. So now you do not want it to start and end with red. So we're gonna add two more rows of white to finish off our strip. So now we're just going to repeat row three and four again. So when I finished the last row of 50, I already pulled my white through. So I'm just gonna work those last two rows with you. We're going to chain one. You're going to turn your work, skip that beginning chain one, work one single crochet in each stitch across. You should have a total of four single crochet at the end of row 51. You're going to chain one, you're going to turn your work. You're going to skip that beginning chain one, insert into that first single crochet, and you're going to work one single crochet in each stitch across. Again, you're going to have a total of four single crochet at the end of the row. So I finished that stitch in white and I pulled my white through the loop. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fasten off both the white and the red. Now I'm going to leave a long sewing length. I would leave at least, I'd say 15 to 20 inches. We're going to use this sewing length to sew the band together into a ring and then we're going to use it and sew in the white sack around the hat. We're also going to do the same thing with the red. You're going to leave about a 15, 20 inch length on the red as well. So let me fasten off my red. Now what I do with the white is I'll just chain two and then pull that really long length through, pull down, it secures your work. Now the red, what I'm going to do, I'm going to insert my hook underneath one of the loops on the back of one of those stitches. I'm going to pull that red through and I'm going to chain two, 
pull up and pull that yarn out. I'm going to do the same thing, grab it and pull down, and it, it'll just knot it on the back of my work. So again, this is what it will look like. You'll have those two long sewing lengths. So now what you want to do is you're going to take your yarn needle and you're just going to thread that white yarn through your needle. You're going to take your band and you're going to take the side that looks all crisp and clear. This is the right side and when you turn it over, the wrong side will have this edge with all those yarn ends that you carried up. So you're going to take the wrong side and you're going to fold it so the right sides are facing. So the outside of the hat band will have those edges. And now all you're going to do is just sew this white piece to the end of the red. So you're just sewing those two ends together to make a ring. So I'm just going into that first stitch. I'm going under both loops of each stitch across and you're just going to sew back and forth. You're taking your yarn needle and you're going under the two loops, the top two loops of that next stitch, and you're matching it up with the two loops of that stitch on the other side. You're just matching the stitches up as you go across the end of your work. You're just going to sew right across that end. And what I like to do is when I get to the last stitch, I like to do an extra stitch in the first and last stitch. Before I pull that last loop through, I'm going to put my yarn needle through it, and it kind of forms a knot. And then I'm just going to take my yarn needle, and I'm going to come down and weave underneath these stitches. And again, this is the wrong side. And then I'm just going to come back through. And you're not going to fasten off. We still need this white left on the yarn needle. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to turn it right side out. So this is what it looks like now. So what you want to do is you want to take the side of your hat band and you want to turn it towards the bottom where this thread is showing. I just have that towards the bottom. So now what I'm going to do is take my hat and you're just going to place this over top the edge of the hat. Just put it right on the hat like so. And then you're just going to take your white, and it doesn't matter where you start, get some of these ends out of the way, pull that red down because you'll be using that later. I'm just gonna stuff that white end in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew with the white, but I'm only matching the white. Now, the side of the hat is all red but we're just going to match the white we're going to go in through the red and match up that white now it won't be the same stitch count so you just have to do it to where it lays nicely around I'm trying to get that red thread out of the way sorry and you just sew going through whatever is there whatever stitches you you will not be able to match this up stitch for stitch because the row count and the stitch count is different so I sewed that there so when I get to the end of the white section I'm just going to take my hook underneath and right between the two I'm taking it back down through that white stitch and then I'm going to go in between the front and the back of that band I hope you can see this okay and then I'm going to come back out through that front. It just helps keep that white behind. And then again, just make sure that it's up against your work like that. You won't be able to match stitches. You're just going to sew in whatever stitch is laying right next to that white section. And then I sew with the white. And then again, I go down through, in between, and then I come back up in the white. And I just repeat that around my hat. So go ahead and sew on the white. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to repeat the same thing working with the red. Let me take my white out. You're going to take your white out. You're going to thread your red 
you might want to pull this red up through your work where the red is. Let me, let me grab that red real quick. I should have done that before I started. You just want to pull that red out through where you fastened off. And then just take the red. I usually like ball it up around my finger. And then just place it inside the hat until you're ready to do your red. So I'm going to thread my white again. I'm going to continue sewing around just in the white sections on the bottom. And then I'm going to put my yarn needle up through the back, right on the wrong side. Just weave it underneath these stitches. And then you're going to start and you're going to sew the white sections around the top of the hat. So then you just want to go ahead and you can just put one tack stitch in each one and carry that yarn needle behind just to tack it so it stays in place. So I'm going to finish sewing on my white, then I'm going to change over to the red. You're just going to match the red up and then you're going to bring it on the other side and tack one stitch in the top of each section matching it with the color of yarn you have. So go ahead, sew your hat band on. When I get finished, I'll be back, and then we'll continue. So I have my hat band sewed around my hat. This is what it looks like. Right there's our little hat. So now you're going to take the head and body, the part we made in part one of the snowman, and we're going to stuff this head. So grab some fiber fill, and we're just going to go ahead and stuff the head. And this is only temporary. We're going to stuff it and then we're going to pull the stuffing back out. But I'm going to stuff it so we can get the hat placed and sewed on the head. So stuff it kind of firmly. Let me get some more stuffing. It's all up to you on how firmly you want to stuff the head. But you want to just get that nice and snug so it's just a nice just feels nice and stuffed and firm. So there we stuffed the head. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a little more stuffing and we're going to stuff it up inside the hat. And the reason we're stuffing the hat is because if you just place it on top of the head, if you just place it on top of the head, then it can like bend down. So we want to make that so it stays puffy. So just take some stuffing, place it inside that hat. And this is where I think my hat stretched when I stuffed the hat. Sorry if I was out of view. I was looking at my stuffing. Just going to place that extra little bit in there. So you can see how much stuffing I have in there. Kind of really packing it in because the top of the snowman head's going to go up into here a little bit. So now I'm going to have to get some white. So you're going to have to get a piece of white yarn. Make it pretty long. It's better to have too much than not enough. And just thread that yarn. I, I used a couple feet of yarn. I like to have a lot of yarn. Thread it onto the needle. So now what we're going to do is we're going to place that hat on top of his head and sew it in place. So you just have to kind of play with it to see where you might like that hat to sit. If it's not, now right now the head wants to push that hat up. So you have to either take a little more stuffing out. You just have to play around with it until you get it to where you like it. Now with my hat, I kind of pulled it down a little bit more in the back so it was slanted just slightly if you can see how it's up in the air in the front and I pulled it down a little bit in the back. Just, let me see, there's about one, two, about three rounds in the back. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attach my white yarn right here to one of these white sections and I'm just going to tie a knot and then what I do is I just stuff that yarn right up inside the hat. I'm just going to tie a double knot, make it nice and secure and then just stick that end right up in the hat. Now I'm going to start in the back so wherever I start will be the back of the head. So I'm just going to place it on my snowman. And again, you're going to have to play around with it. This is hard to do and film at the same time. I, I usually put this in my lap when I, I sew it. 
So I'm going to go ahead and place this on my snowman. Now I, I think I'm going to get some pins, some straight pins or some pins and pin this where I want it. And then as I sew around, I'll take the pins out as I go around because what happens is the stuffing wants to push the hat back off the snowman because it's really stuffed. So you got to either pin it or kind of put it in your lap and try to hold it in place. But I think it's best to pin it and then have it angled down about three rounds below the front. Get that sewed on and I'll be right back and we'll continue on. So I almost have my hat sewed together. I'm over and right before I close, right before you have about an inch, an inch and a half right here, just test your hat. If it doesn't look full enough, then this is where you can take some stuffing and just place some more stuffing in the hat before you close that up. So if you want that hat a little higher, a little fuller, then this is where you would put that extra stuffing in right before you close that up. So I'm going to go ahead and close my hat and finish sewing it on. I think it has a pretty nice shape to it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish. I'll be back and then we'll continue on. So I have my hat attached to the head. So now all we need to do is make our pom-pom. So here's our pom-pom. It's about a three inch pom-pom. Now you can use whatever method you prefer. You can use a pom-pom maker or hand make it, uh, like a tassel, tassel version. Uh, so roughly about three inches. So go ahead and make your pom-pom and then attach it to the center of your head. And when we get that done, I'll be back and then we'll attach those safety eyes and then we'll begin the nose. I'll be right back. I made my pom-pom. I attached it to the head and now we're getting ready to put the eyes on. So you're going to have to pull the stuffing back out of the head. So just reach inside and just pull that stuffing out so we can get those safety eyes in there. And I'm going to compare it to this one. I come down about two rounds from the edge of the hat and then I have about six stitches. Let me recount. One, two, three, four, five, six stitches in between each eye. So before you fasten those eyes, I come down two rounds. So come down about right here. I'm just gonna find what spot I think looks the nicest for the front of my hat. And I think right here looks the best. So I'm just going to insert that eye. And then I'm going to count over one, two, three, four, five, six stitches and insert my other eye. So kind of look at it. Make sure that is where you want your eyes. If you want them closer together, then move your eye to where you want it. That's a little too close, but I'm going to stick with my six stitches. I'm going to insert that. I'm going to compare it to this one over here. It looks to be about the same. Once you have the eyes in, now you can choose to use different eyes. If you want different eyes, you can go ahead and put the googly eyes. I just think that if these are going to be around small children, you should always use the safety eyes. So I'm going to put the backs on. So let me put the backs on and I'll be back and we'll restuff the face. So I attach my eyes, put the safety backs on, and now I'm going to go ahead and restuff my face. And just stuff it to where you think it has a nice look. And we're going to round this up in a little bit. So go ahead and stuff it. And now we're going to go ahead and start the nose. So now we're getting ready to start our nose. So you're going to grab your orange. I have my orange attached to my hook. And again, use whatever method you prefer. I use a double knot and that's the way I was taught. You can use a slip knot or whatever way you want to join. We're going to start with the chain seven. Yarn over the hook, pull it through that loop on your hook. That's one. Yarn over, pull through. That's two, three, four, five, six and seven. We're going to join our chain seven together with a slip stitch to form a ring. So you're going to skip the first six chain 
insert into that seventh chain from hook or the last chain and work a slip stitch. Yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. We have our chain seven ring made. We're going to begin with the chain one, and this chain one does not count as a stitch. Now when I'm working my stitches around my work, I'm going to hold this extra piece of yarn right around my work, and I'm going to be working in the stitch and around that piece of yarn. So we're going to begin and we're going to work one single crochet in each chain around for a total of seven single crochet. Insert into that first chain, work a single crochet. That's one. Insert into the next chain, work a single crochet. That's two. Insert into the next chain, work a single crochet, that's three. And as I'm working, I'm working right over top of that extra piece of yarn. Insert into the next chain, take your hook underneath that piece of yarn, work a single crochet, that's four. Insert into the next chain, work a single crochet, that's five. Insert into the next chain, work a single crochet, that's six. Insert into the next chain, work a single crochet, and that's seven. So what I do now, as you can see, here's your ring. You worked your seven single crochet. You're going to clip this extra yarn off. We work over the end, so I'm just going in and clip that off. We're not going to join our round. We're going to mark it with a stitch marker into that first single crochet we made. If you're new to crocheting and it confuses you when you get to the end, you can count backwards. You can count your stitches and go one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven insert your hook into that seventh stitch and place a contrasting piece of yarn or place your stitch marker into that first stitch. So when you're working in the round, this chain one does not count as a stitch. So we're going to continue on and work rounds two through four. So we're going to work three rounds of single crochet, which is one single crochet in each stitch, and then we're going to move that stitch marker up with each round that we complete. So let's begin. You're going to skip that chain one space. You're going to insert into that first stitch, and again, this is the start of round two. You're going to work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. And now I'm going to come back and I'm going to move my stitch marker up to that first stitch. Now I'm just going to work one single crochet in each stitch around. Now because this is going to be pulling tight, you need to make sure that you're going into the right stitch. So when you look at your work, you can see the stitch is here, but it's clear to the right. So it looks like there's still a stitch here to work in, but there's not. You need to jump over to that next stitch. So your stitch is coming down through here, clear to the right. You come over to the next stitch, insert your hook, work a single crochet. And you may have to keep turning it right side out because it is going to want to pull and have the wrong side facing. So you just need to keep turning it so the right side is out. We're going to continue working one single crochet in each stitch around. You'll have a total of seven single crochet. So I'm just going to work it right with you. And you're going to work right around to that stitch marker. So I'm over to the stitch marker. And that's all you have to do. So go ahead and work two more rounds. Just click back on the video where I started round two and work 
rounds three and four working one single crochet in each stitch around to the stitch marker move that stitch marker up with each round and you do that two more times I'll meet you at the end of round four I'm over at the end of round four and it's not much to look at you're just working a little tiny tube you should have a total of seven stitches around and you should be at the end of round four. So now we're going to start decreasing to make the point of the nose. We're going to begin round five and we're just going to start with a single crochet into that beginning stitch with the stitch marker. Insert into that beginning stitch at first stitch, work a single crochet going to pull my hook up and out and I'm going to mark that first stitch just pull that yarn through we're going to single crochet two together insert into the next stitch and remember go under the top two loops of that stitch yarn over and pull through insert into the next stitch yarn over and pull through you have three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. We're going to single crochet into the next stitch. Insert your hook into that next stitch and work a single crochet. Now we're going to single crochet two together, insert into that next stitch, yarn over and pull through insert into that next stitch and it gets, starts getting really narrow and hard to work with yarn over and pull through you have three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook we have one stitch remaining you'll just have to play with it and flatten it out as you go so you can see your stitches insert into that next stitch which is the last stitch around work a single crochet and that is the end of round five and you can see our tip of our nose is getting smaller now we're going to do our final round of the nose round six and we're going to start with a single crochet into this first stitch so insert you you're going to have to kind of move it around and flatten it out to see your stitches insert into that first stitch and work a single crochet now we're going to single crochet two together and we're going to do that two times again you're going to have to kind of flatten your work out to see those stitches insert into the next stitch making sure you're going under two loops and bringing that hook back out through the center make sure you're not catching it on the other side yarn over and pull through find your next stitch insert into the next stitch and remember it gets a little harder as you get to the tip of the nose yarn over and pull through that stitch you have three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook we need to single crochet two together one more time so insert into that next stitch making sure that you're coming up through the center of the nose and not out through the other side yarn over and pull through turn your work and kind of flatten it out so you can see that next stitch insert into that next stitch and up through the center yarn over and pull through you have three loops on your hook you're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook and now we're going to fasten off so we're going to leave a long length for sewing so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull quite a bit off and like I said it's better to have too much yarn than not enough so I'm just going to pull about maybe 30 inches I'm going to chain two I'm going to pull that yarn out through my work and I'm going to pull down and make a secure knot now you're still going to have that little bit of an opening here so I'm going to take my stitch marker out I'm going to grab my yarn needle you want to thread the end of that sewing length of yarn through your needle and then what we're going to do is we're going to take our needle and go through the top of those stitches and we're just going to weave through there 
and back out to the beginning. And then you're going to pull tight. And what that does is close the top of your work and secures that tip of the nose. So you just pull that tight. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to weave this down through and on the inside, just weave it right down through your work, through those stitches, down to the bottom of the nose. and you want to come all the way down to the bottom, right down to that foundation chain of your nose. So there we have our thread to the bottom of the nose, and that's where we'll be sewing. So now we want to stuff our nose, so grab your fiber fill, and it's hard to get your finger in there, so sometimes I use my crochet hook if you can just get it started and just get that in there. It's up to you how much stuffing you want to put in your nose. You can make it real big and fat. You can make it long and skinny. Just stuff it and form the shape you want. So I think that looks good. Just play around with it until you get it to what you think looks nice. I think that looks fine for our snowman's nose. So you're going to grab your snowman. Now let me show you the one that I already have his nose sewed on. And what I did was I tried to keep it up so the top of the nose was right towards the bottom of the eyes. So what you want to do is you want to sew your nose to where the nose is up high on the face or wherever you prefer it. But I stayed right below the eyes. The top of my nose was right towards the bottom of the eyes and I have it up high. And then that way it gives you enough room to put that big smile onto your snowman. So I'm just going to take my nose, I'm going to center it right below the eyes and I'm gonna sew it on. And when I get that done, I'm going to go ahead Use your yarn needle, grab your black yarn, and put whatever facial features you want here. Uh, just do it whatever way you want. I just use straight stitches, and you can see how I just went in and out and formed that smile. You can make a whimsical smile. You can put whatever kind of smile you want on your snowman. So I'm going to sew my nose on, put his mouth on, and I'll be back, and we'll continue on. I'm back. I have my nose and my mouth sewed on, so this is what our snowman looks like. This is the finished one, and this is as far as we got on this one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to define the neck here of your snowman. So when you look at your snowman, this is the bottom of the neck where you'll see how it narrows through here, and then this is the shoulders. So put your hand up into your snowman and see if you like the way it looks. If you have a little more room here where these three right here in these rows, you can see where that dips down right here. That's where we're going to um, form our neck and secure it. But if it's not stuffed enough, you want to put a little more stuffing in there. Now, I don't like how mine's stuffed, so I'm going to add just a little more stuffing up into my snowman. I want his head to be nice and firm, and that way it helps hold the head up. So make sure this is stuffed nice and firm. I'm going to add just a touch more. Really get that stuffing up in there. Okay, now when you see this, it's pulling apart too much, so I don't like that. So now I'm going to take some more out. Just wanted to show you the difference of what it should look like. You don't want your stitches to be deformed and really pulled out of shape. So I'm just going to like maneuver my stuffing around. Then you're going to take about a 12 to 14 inch length of white yarn, thread it onto your yarn needle. And you're going to turn your snowman over to the wrong side. You're just going to go in right where you see the dip in the neck. Just go right in anywhere in the back center and you're going to take your yarn needle up and down in between each stitch around your snowman. You're going to leave a length out here on the front so you have a length that you can grab a hold of. 
So just continue working around, weaving in and out of those stitches right in that dip. And you can just follow the row you're in and just continue going across. You can see where you can follow your row. I'm just going right in and out of that row here, working around. And you're just going to continue to the back. And I'm coming out through the same stitch that I went in. So I have my two lengths and now what you're going to do, I'm just going to take my yarn needle out of here for a second, is you're just going to pull that tight until you get a really good definition of the neck. So then after you pull it about 50% of the way and gather it, you're just going to tie a knot on the back. I just tie a double knot to secure it. And then you're going to just thread those ends in your yarn needle and you're just going to weave them in and out of the stitches to secure those ends and then come back the other way. Whoops, my hand's in the way, sorry about that. Just go one way, come back the other, and if you want to even do it a third time, you can to really secure that end. Do that to both ends and then clip the ends. I'm going to weave in my other end and I'll come back and then we'll continue and we'll be making the inside inner circle and stuffing the shoulders and then we'll place it on our toilet paper. I'll be right back. I'm back. I have my neck gathered. I have my ends weaved in on the back. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to crochet a circle which will fit up inside our snowman right about here. And then we're going to stuff this part here, place our circle inside, and sew it in place. So let's get started on that. So to start our circle, you're going to need your white yarn. I already have mine attached to my hook, so attach your yarn to your hook. And we're going to start with the chain four. Yarn over the hook, pull through the loop on your hook, that creates your first chain. Yarn over, pull through, that's two. Yarn over, pull through, that's three yarn over, pull through, and that's four. So for round one, we're going to work 10 double crochet into this fourth chain from hook. So yarn over the hook, you're going to skip three chain, insert into that last chain, the fourth chain, and work a double crochet. Yarn over the hook, pull through that chain, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. That's how you do a double crochet. I'll show you one more time. Yarn over the hook, insert into that same chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. So now we need to make eight more double crochet into the same chain. Yarn over the hook, insert into that same chain, work a double crochet. Yarn over, insert into that same chain, and work a double crochet. We worked four double crochet. We need six more, so continue and work six more double crochet into that same chain, and I'll meet you at the end of round one. So I'm over at the end of round one, and you should have your beginning chain three, and then 10 double crochet around for a total of 11 double crochet stitches. The beginning chain three counts as your first double crochet. We're going to slip stitch to the top of that beginning chain three. Your first chain is clear down here hidden, so count one, two, three. Insert into the top of that beginning chain three and slip stitch. Yarn over the hook, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. Round one is finished. Now we're going to start round two. Round two, we're going to start with the chain three. One, two, three. We're going to work a double crochet into that same stitch. So yarn over the hook, insert into that same stitch, 
work a double crochet. Round two is going to be a simple round. We're going to work two double crochet in each stitch around. So let's begin. Yarn over the hook, insert into the next stitch. Under both loops of the top of that stitch, work a double crochet. That's one. Yarn over the hook, insert back into that same stitch, and work your second double crochet. And that is the end of the repeat. So we're just going to continue again. Yarn over the hook, insert into that next stitch, work two double crochet. There's one. Yarn over the hook, insert back into that same stitch, and work a second double crochet. So go ahead and repeat two double crochet in each stitch around and I'll meet you at the end of round two. I'm over at the end of round two. You should have your beginning chain three and then a total of 21 double crochet around for a total of 22 stitches. Now we're going to go ahead and join in the top of that beginning chain three Count up one, two, three, insert into the top of that beginning chain three, and slip stitch. Yarn over the hook, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. So now we're ready to begin round three, which is the final round. And all we're going to do is repeat round two. We're going to begin with a chain three, one, two, and three. You're going to yarn over insert into that same beginning stitch, follow that beginning chain three down, insert into that same beginning stitch, work a double crochet. We're going to work two double crochet in each stitch around. Yarn over the hook, insert into that next stitch, and work two double crochet. There's one. Yarn over the hook, insert into that same stitch, work your second double crochet. And that is all there is to round three. I'll show you one more time. Yarn over the hook, insert into that next stitch, and work two double crochet. One, yarn over, insert into that same stitch, and work your second double crochet. So go ahead and work two double crochet in each stitch around. I'll meet you at the end of round three. I'm over at the end of round three. You should have your beginning chain three, and then you should have a total of 43 double crochet around for a total of 44 double crochet stitches. We're going to go ahead and join in the top of that beginning chain three. So count up one, two, three, insert into the top of that stitch, Yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on your hook. So now we're going to fasten off, but you're going to need a sewing length. So pull off quite a bit, enough that you can sew this around that entire circle. And I always say it's better to have too much yarn than not enough when you're sewing. Now I'm fastening off with the chain two. I pull my yarn up and out. I grab that yarn, I pinch it together and pull down and it creates a secure knot. Now this is the way I was taught, so that's how I do it. You can use whatever method you prefer. So now you're going to need your yarn needle. Go ahead and thread that sewing length onto your yarn needle. Just insert it right into that opening. And then we're ready to sew this to the inside of our snowman. So let me zoom out, is you're going to grab your snowman, and when you look at your snowman, you can, I, I hope you can see this, but you can kind of see right here, and that's where we crocheted in the front loop only and left the back loop on the inside of our work open. So you're just going to take your snowman and you're going to flip the bottom up and open it up, and when you look at your work, you'll notice, see how you see this ridge around your work? That's the back loop of where we 
did round 29, I believe. So that was round 29 where we left that open. Let me see if I can... I'm trying to show it so you can see it better. So you can see this ridge right where those back loops are sticking up. So what we're going to do is we're going to place stuffing in here. And after you stuff that, you're just going to place this right on top of your work. And then you're going to just sew around. Now your stitches won't match, so you just kind of put it wherever you can just to sew that in place. And you're only working into these loops here that are sti sticking up on your work. It might be easier to see when you have it in your own hands and see your work. So I'm going to grab my stuffing and you're just going to place some stuffing in that hole and then place. Now your stuffing is going to want to come out because it's a pretty big hole or you can start sewing your circle on and get it halfway sewed on and then put your stuffing in might be easier. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and start in the back. So here's the top front. I'm going to place my circle and I'm going to start right here. And I'm just going to take my yarn needle and I'm just going to pull it through any loop towards the back center just to get it started. Now I'm going to turn this because this is how I, I sew. So what you're going to do is you're just going to continue sewing and you're going through the top two loops and then just match it up the best you can with one of those back loops on the inside of the snowman. Just come back around, go in through a stitch, and then up through a back loop on the snowman. Now I'm going to so about halfway, maybe a little more, and then I'm going to stuff it and then close it up. So I'll be back when I get about halfway to three-fourths around. I'm back. I was in my own little daydream world. I was sewing and forgot to stop, so I have only a little hole. So you might want to stop before until your hole's a little bigger. I'm going to grab my stuffing, and I'm going to go ahead and stuff it. It is a lot easier to get part of that sewed on before you stuff it. Get your stuffing stuffed in there. And just kind of look at your work and make sure it's nice and firm because this has a lot of weight sitting onto that toilet paper so his head will bob. So just try to make sure it's nice and firm to support that head. So I'm going to add a little more stuffing. Now I think that's pretty good there. So I'm going to sew this shut and then I'll be right back. So I'm back and my inside circle is all attached, sewed on, ends are weaved in and it just makes a nicer look. I wish I would have done this to the Santa topper that I made but somebody suggested it and I thought that's a great idea so I'm trying to do that now on my designs. So that's all done so now you can pull that back down over and now it's time to place our snowman on the toilet paper. So let me zoom out a little bit more so you can see. Sorry about my mess on my table. I'm just going to grab my snowman and just fit him over the toilet paper. Just work him down over. And you'll notice that he has an odd shape. Well, that was because I was trying to figure out how to design him so he's rounded, but you still had to have that part over here to fit over, this, over the toilet paper. So he does have a little bit of a funny shape. But when you look at when he's finished, how the scarf kind of helps hide this in the shoulder area. So this is where I'm going to end the video for part two. 
So this is what your snowman should look like when you get to the end of this part two video. In part three, we're going to make the scarf, which we'll put on the neck area, which kind of hides this odd shape. And then we'll attach his two little arms, make those, and sew the buttons on, and then your snowman will be done. I can't wait to see you for part three so we can finish this little guy up. So until next time, happy crocheting, everyone.